Are you ready? For the greatest train simulator mod. Ever. Off here and welcome to Dovetail Games' Train Simulator. Today I'm going to be showing off and reviewing a collection of mods that I found recently which adds several Thomas and Friends characters to the game. Now Thomas mods for Train Simulators are nothing new, there have been mods for the old Microsoft Train Simulator and many characters were added to the Train series by Euron, but what I like about this Train Simulator is not only is it, in my opinion, a much nicer game overall, but the installation process is so much simpler. No more awkward installation software for me! First, I'll quickly throw in an installation guide for the uninitiated. Download the engine or engines you wish to install, links in the description. Uncompress the zip file. As you can see, I'm using a program here, but the process is fairly simple by default. Then go to your C drive, then click Program Files 86, then Steam. Steam Apps, Common, Railworks, and then open Utilities.exe. It'll then probably ask if you want to allow the program to make changes. Click Yes and you should get this window. Click the Package Manager tab and refresh the window. Click the install button and then go wherever you unzip your downloaded file. Select the .rwp file then click open. The files will now install. Now on to the review itself. First things first, all the engines available have been really beautifully rendered.
kudos to Sodor Rails, they're amazing models. They really look like the models as used on the television series. All the engines have rendered in a matte effect, which I feel does make them look a little bit unrealistic, especially when compared to the metallic and realistically weathered locos and rolling stock. However, this wouldn't be as apparent if they had their own routes to run on that were made in the same style. According to Soda Rails, Thomas and Friends routes are to be announced and as such aren't available to the public yet. For fans who are looking to recreate their favourite scenes from the classic series, you'll be glad to hear that Henry is available in all three of his shapes, old, new and current. Several of the engines also come with a faceless version as well. Speaking of faces, as far as I can tell, the faces can't be changed to allow different expressions, but this isn't a particularly necessary feature. The controls in the cab are again really nicely modelled, but all the engines do have exactly the same cab control panel apart from Toby and Diesel, who have no cab interior at all. Several of the engines also have misplaced leaning out views, and some have no such view at all. A lot of the engines also have slightly rough edges inside the cab. The worst offender I'd say is Gordon, with the outside window frame clipping far over the edge of the inside window frame. Whilst inside Gordon, you also sit way too far forward and clip into the control panel slightly. Another noteworthy character is Henry, who, when being run with the new or current shape models, has no texture on the backside of his firebox, so you can see inside it. Now, you may be wondering why I haven't had any of the in-game sounds running in the background of these clips. Well, my reasoning is simple. All the engines sound the same. Yep, that's right, every single engine, despite a couple of examples, use the sounds from the Stanier class Black 5 loco. The exceptions are Donald, Douglas and Toby, which use the whistle from the 7F loco, and Diesel, who is basically silent besides his horn. Another thing to note is despite the fact Diesel is, well, a diesel, he operates the same as the steam engines, complete with steam pressure gauge and water coal level indicators, rather than the completely different setup for diesel locomotives. I can only assume this is an error that will be fixed at some point. Now, this is a strange error I came across while collecting footage for this review. Gordon, for whatever reason, decided to drop all these engine sounds mid-journey. This also happened when I reset the scenario. The only conclusion I could come up with is that the AI-driven locos from the Exeter Kingsway DLC had something that was overriding the sounds from Gordon. This also happened briefly to James and Duck. It was really odd, as some of the other sounds, for example the whistle, continued to work. Some other smaller errors to note is the animation of several of the engine's side rods and wheels. Most if not all of the engine's wheel animation seems to stutter at a certain point as they turn. Other characters have side rods that randomly disconnect themselves, and both Henry and Gordon have parts of the piston assembly that don't move at all. Although this is more understandable, I hate to imagine how difficult it would be to code all those separate moving parts. A couple of engines also have rods that slightly clip through the wheel. And I know this is going to sound massively nitpicky of me, but one thing that somewhat bugs me is that Edward and Oliver, when they have their lights on, carry the express passenger head code. Now, I know at least Edward has carried this head code a couple of times in the TV series, but more commonly both of them have carried the single lamp on the left side, the standard placement on the model series and the permanent fixture in the CGI episodes. A less nitpicky point is that some engines don't have lamps at all, and most of them lose their lamps entirely when set to the secondary reversing setting. Duck's rear lamp is also broken, as the red light can be seen inside his cab. However, as a fan of the earlier episodes, I do appreciate that Duck's front lamp sits next to his sandbox rather than on top of it as it does in the CGI episodes. Now, I should probably discuss technical details. I wanted to do some testing to find out the maximum speeds of all of the engines, and was surprised to find that the max speed for almost all of them is 49.5 miles an hour. 
the exceptions to this being Donald and Douglas, who ran at 59.2, and Ben, who seemed to jump between 49.5 and 49.6, although I feel like this may have just been a fluke, especially as Bill didn't do that. An unfortunate side effect of this relatively slow top speed is that Paul Gordon will never win that race against his brother. Dignity. Now, another thing to talk about is the rolling stock. Now, the only rolling stock I'm using here from Sodor Rails is Annie and Clarabel. The other pieces of rolling stock that have appeared in this review are from Tomic's Nscale89's website. Despite there being two different sites involved, however, the general consensus is the same. They're too quiet. Now, I know that this problem may come from the fact that these DLCs are getting a bit old now. The stock sounds from a lot of these older DLCs, such as the Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway, also have very quiet running trucks and coaches. When I first started playing with the Exit to Kingsborough DLC in early 2016, I immediately fell in love with the updated sounds in the game. Just take a quick listen. So yes, it may be a little unfair to judge the Thomas stuff based on its heritage, but I'm biased, don't judge me. 
So, in conclusion, the model work is excellent with great attention to detail, however the animation errors, lack of original sounds and uniform max speeds kind of detracts from the overall thing. I look forward to the future content from both Soda Rails and Tomics and Scale and hope they continue to make this great content for the world to enjoy. So, that's my thoughts and opinions of the Thomas the Tank Engine mods for Trend Simulator. If you enjoyed this review, be sure to like, comment, all that good stuff. I've been Tim12, and I'll see you next time. Bye!